At the beginning of the film, we meet Matthew, whose wife Claire is suffering from cancer. Medically, her treatment is no longer possible because the cancer has spread throughout her body. Claire knew this well, so she stopped her treatment, even refusing to give a blood sample. However, due to Matthew's insistence, she finally gives her blood sample to her nurse. After the nurse leaves, Matthew's cousin tricks her and Matthew steals Claire's blood sample from him. The reason behind all this is revealed later. When the nurse leaves, Matthew's cousin asks him why he did that. Matthew only replies that he has found a new way to cure Claire. It was clear that he stole the blood for some kind of ritual. Matthew then goes to a bar where he meets a man named Al, who is supposed to tell him the ritual to cure Claire. They bring a very heavy sack to his house. Al instructs Matthew to place it somewhere where no one can enter, so he puts it in the basement. Al then tells him to light a candle and pour Claire's blood into the sack, and then make a wish. He also warns Matthew not to look at or touch the sack, nor enter the room where the sack is after making the wish. Al tells him to take a step back and leave the room, as the sack will then work its magic. Matthew finds this all strange, but Al warns him that he will slowly understand. Al also mentions that strange things might happen in Matthew's house for three days, but he must endure them, and after three days, his troubles will be over. That night, Matthew goes to the basement to perform the ritual, but breaks one of the rules as he has to open the door and seize the sack, which seems to be moving as if it has some energy or entity inside it. Ignoring these things, Matthew leaves the room. Later, we see that Matthew had also built a studio for Claire, as both of them were singers. However, Claire might have died without seeing the studio. While talking to his cousin, Matthew suddenly hears Claire's voice, which leads him to rush to the room, only to find Claire sleeping, making him realize it was just his imagination. The next day, while cooking, Matthew hears a woman's voice on his mobile radio, which scares him. That night, he wakes up hearing someone's voice more clearly, feeling as if Claire is saying she doesn't know why she got cancer and that Matthew should have had cancer instead. Angry at hearing this, Matthew goes to Claire's room and sees that she is still sleeping and didn't say anything. Matthew realizes that the sack he brought into the basement might be causing all this. The next day, his cousin visits again, and while they play golf, their ball accidentally rolls into the forbidden basement room. When his cousin tries to retrieve it, Matthew stops him and forbids him from entering the room, which his cousin finds very strange. As time passes, strange things continue to happen to Matthew. He hears weird sounds, receives strange calls, and even starts seeing a girl with a black mark on her hand. One day, Matthew receives a parcel that Claire had ordered for herself. When he opens it, he sees Claire's head inside, which terrifies him. But when Claire comes out of her wheelchair, she shows him that it was just a wig in the box, indicating that Matthew is losing his grip on reality. Matthew tries to contact Al, but Al doesn't answer his calls, leaving Matthew scared and unable to find Al's whereabouts. The next day, we see Claire's health improving as she moves to the kitchen in her wheelchair, making Matthew happy. However, when he starts cooking, someone suddenly places a hand on his shoulder. At first, Matthew thinks it's Claire, but the hand is dark and creepy, scaring him. He realizes that the person behind him is not Claire, but an entity. When Matthew tells the entity to go away, Claire, still in her wheelchair, thinks he is scolding her, gets upset, and leaves. Shocked by the situation, Claire cuts her wrist that night. When Matthew sees this, he immediately calls a doctor, but an entity answers, telling him that he killed his wife, Claire. Suddenly, a knife appears in Matthew's hand, and he wakes up realizing it was all a dream. The next day, Claire walks into Matthew's room, making him happy to see her getting better. She lies down next to him and talks for a while before going to the bathroom. However, when Matthew receives a call from Claire, he is shocked, realizing that the figure lying next to him is not Claire, but an entity with Claire's face. Scared, Matthew leaves the room and sees the same entity that he had seen several times before with a black mark on its hand. Unknowingly, Matthew ends up in the forbidden basement room where he sees the sack again. Terrified, he drops his torch, and a hand from the sack picks it up, leading Matthew to plead for it to go away. The entity listens and retreats into the sack, 
but Matthew continues to hear voices begging to be let out. As he returns to Claire's room, he sees she is no longer there. Searching for her, he finds her happy in the studio. He tries to explain everything to her, telling her about the ritual and how it will heal her completely. However, as he speaks, Matthew receives a call from Claire's nurse, who informs him that Claire has only two days to live. The nurse advises him to spend as much time as possible with her and accept the reality. Meanwhile, Claire had gone to the basement room where the sack was kept. Seeing the sack, Claire's condition deteriorates and she suddenly faints. Matthew arrives just in time to carry Claire back to her room. Her condition had worsened and Matthew could not bear to see her like this. He decides that enough is enough and tries to get rid of the sack by throwing it out of the house. However, the sack had become too heavy and couldn't be moved. Desperate, Matthew calls Al again, but when Al doesn't answer, Matthew texts him, saying he is getting rid of the sack, breaking yet another rule by touching it. Afterwards, when Matthew tries to work on his laptop, it suddenly displays frightening images, including Claire's test results, which scare him. Realizing he is losing his sanity, Matthew decides to find Al. He goes to the bar where he first met Al and, with the help of a bartender friend, tracks down Al's house. When he arrives, a girl opens the door and Matthew is shocked to see that she is the same girl with the black mark on her hand whom he had seen in his house. Al arrives and his daughter begs him to explain everything to Matthew. Al reassures her and asks Matthew if he broke any rules of the ritual. When Matthew says nothing, Al warns him that many powers are involved in this ritual and they will scare him as he had previously mentioned. Al then tells Matthew that he will now face even greater horrors. He reveals that the sack does not harm anyone but only provides a replacement. To explain, Al reveals that the girl Matthew saw is not his daughter, as his daughter is dead. The entity in the sack took someone else in exchange for Al's daughter. Similarly, the entity intends to replace Claire. Matthew realizes that the entity is not healing Claire, but rather intends to kill her and replace her with someone else. When Matthew asks where Al's daughter's body is, Al takes him to the basement, where he sees that Al's daughter is vomiting black bile, her face terrifying. Scared, Matthew returns home. Upon arriving, he sees his cousin at the door and quickly takes him inside, telling him that he is taking Claire to the hospital. However, it's already too late, Claire has died, leaving Matthew devastated as he sits and cries for hours. His cousin feels terrible for him. Suddenly, Matthew gets up and asks for his cousin's help. His cousin doesn't understand what Matthew wants, but he follows him into the basement room, where Matthew puts Claire's body into the sack. His cousin thinks Matthew is in deep shock, causing him to act this way. After placing Claire's body in the sack, Matthew's cousin closes the room, believing Matthew might do something bad to the body. He warns Matthew not to enter the room, saying he will take care of Claire's body. When his cousin enters the room, he is attacked by a horrific hand from the sack, which strangles him. The entity then vomits something black into Matthew's mouth, and the scene ends there. At this time, a nurse comes to Matthew's house to check on Claire. When Matthew opens the door, we are shocked to see that he appears perfectly fine, showing no signs of being affected by the entity's vomit. He behaves as if nothing happened and Claire is alive. He invites the nurse inside, and when she asks about Claire, he tells her to go to the room and see her. Matthew had planned all this, knowing the entity was in Claire's room. As soon as the nurse enters, the entity kills her and puts her body into the sack. In exchange for the nurse's sacrifice, the entity resurrects Claire, though it doesn't truly bring her back to life but rather revives her body with another entity inside it. This entity will remain with Matthew for the rest of his life. Now, there was one final part of the ritual that Matthew still had to complete. After fulfilling his wish, he needed to pass the sack on to someone else, just as Al had done. To do this, he meets a friend at the bar. Her mother is sick, so he convinces her to participate in the ritual, promising that it will heal her mother. The girl is skeptical, but sees the proof when she notices that Matthew's previously sick wife is now with him at the bar. He had evidence that Matthew's sick wife used to come with him to the bar. She would dance with him and appear to be perfectly fine. However, she didn't know the truth about Claire. 
After listening to Matthew, she takes the bag to her house. With this, Matthew's entire ritual and purpose are fulfilled. 